All right, welcome back to Twin Flame Energy Podcast. I am your host, Dominique. And I am your co-host, AJ. With all the extraness. I mean, I gotta be, right? I guess so. So, thank you for being kind in our little sabbatical last week. We were celebrating our son's 15th birthday, so we took a pause. But we are back with our same topic that we were actually going to cover last week, which was supporting roles in marriage yep all righty support (laughs) sis anyways (laughs) so just to kind of get started with the topic and just jump right in here we have a couple of articles from psychologytoday.com to get started with some topics Uh, the first i have is entitled what is your role in your relationship Okay. All right. What is your role in your relationship? Gotcha. Yes. So just to kind of start this off, it says conflict between a couple can often feel convoluted and layered in ways that are hard to make sense of. But there is one dominant parent and the other role of a child. Breaking down <laughs> dynamic can shed light on how it may be infiltrating our relationship and diminish our love, respect, attraction to and action to our partners so what are your thoughts on that they say one is dominant one is a dominant they're saying that and the other takes the role of the child so they're saying that it should be one no it should be they're saying oh, they're this saying that is, this is the statistics this yeah is what kind of the norm is. that people settle into. yeah yeah I, I think there's always a dominant of something and a and, and a less dominant of something else i don't mm-hmm. necessarily you don't like the word put, child <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. No, I, I just don't to put a specific like thing on it. Like, you know, you're dominantly doing this, and you're. Do- and there's always somebody who's dominantly going to do something else. The sa- the per- the more dominant disciplinarian may not be uh, dominant in something else. Yeah, no. But but you're actually you're taking it out of the relationship. You you're thinking uh-huh. as parents do to our kids. This is about our relationship. Oh, what is that, parent? Let me rephrase. Okay. They're saying in a relationship right. of two people, right. not thinking about children, uh, automatically uh, the dynamic <laughs> turns to one yeah, taking I'm, I'm on a parent. parental I'm control, about, yeah, I'm about a parent. <laughs> and the other one a more childlike person in the uh, relationship. So that's how the role that yeah. they fall into I have has nothing to do to with say. children. I have some, okay, I have some interest for that. Okay. With us. Do you want to say it before or after I give you the category? What um, just the tendencies that this type of dynamic. Well, I just want to say, basically, how I feel that we are. Well, let's well then save that because okay, okay, it'll connect something I want to say. Later, okay? Uh, okay, so right now there are tendencies of the parent-child energy in relationships. So I'm going to read that off. Okay, I'm very interesting here. Mm-hmm. First one is childish or submissive versus parental or dominant. What that means is for the per parental person feels mm-hmm. like they need to control the other person in a more childish mode to dominate it okay mm-hmm. that's the first one mm-hmm. the second one is passive and dependent versus driven and compulsive and that okay, one, again. passive passive again. and passive. dependent uh-huh. versus driven and compulsive uh-huh. and in that situation right. The parental partner may be more likely to push themselves and others to achieve they should, in air quotes. Mm -hmm. This is often done in a driven and critical way that can feel controlled. Okay, Mm -hmm. number two. Number three, (laughs) defensive and angry versus rigid and righteous. This one, a parental partner can be closed off to other points of view defensive or even punishing they receive feedback they may counterattack self-righteously in relation to suggestions or criticism when a partner is in that childish mode in this one in particular they tend to fall apart and become self-hating or sulky when they're not given feedback okay so this number four okay uh, yeah yeah. number four you want to hear them all irrational versus overtly rational and moralistic is a person in the child mode is often ruled by emotion 
which then leads to them losing track of what they're, what's really going on and what is in their best interest. A, and in parent mode, go too far the other way, focusing excessively on being rational mm -hmm. at the expense of feelings. They can become mm -hmm. cynical, critical, moralistic, which further frustrates the partner who is feeling more emotionally triggered. Mm, okay? That's deep. All right, there's two more. That's deep. The next one is inability to formulate mm -hmm. and or pursue goals mm -hmm. versus rigid formulation goals. In this one, a person in the child mode can find it difficult to focus or uncover what they want and how to go about getting it. They can operate like a without a rotor, struggling to find their way. A parental person may approach pursuit more rigidly, without joy, turning wants and goals into shoulds and musts. Wow. And the last one, which I believe is number six, so I'll have to recount them. Mm -hmm is covert negative power versus domineering. Someone assuming a parental role can often be bossy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they often even become abusive of power, intimidating others through anger and aggression. A person who feels like a child in this situation may attempt to manipulate others by playing the victim. This person can control others through weakness, and may fall apart in an effort to get what he or she wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you kind of remember all six of those? So nope. you... <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I got, yeah, I got the gist of everything. Okay. So, everything just the know. headers. Childish and submissive versus mm -hmm. parental and dominant. Mm -hmm. Passive and dependent versus driven and compulsive. Mm -hmm. Defensive and angry versus rigid and reckless. Mm -hmm. Irrational versus overtly rational and moralistic. Inability to formulate and or pursue goals versus rigid formulation of goals. And covert negative power versus domineering. Gotcha. So, you have some thoughts on what I think we are. I'll let you go first. And then I'll tell you what my deductive reasoning has come up with. So, after hearing all of that. Uh-huh. Um... I don't think that I don't for us. I don't think that we're dominantly one category. You don't? No, one category. I think that we we change roles and we change our categories very often. Mm -hmm. Meaning there's sometimes you know I'm in the more of the childlike aspect. Mm -hmm. and you're more in the parental, and then sometimes vice versa. And I think we switch back and forth um, based on either timing, what's going on, whatever. You know what I mean? I think we switch a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're just really settled on this is what we are all the time, mm -hmm. all day, every day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can't just say that this defined as, we're not defined as anything. We're defined as, you know, what we need at that moment. Mm -hmm. And we change based on those things. Gotcha. And that's what I was going to say before. And now listening to, um, I hear a lot of different things mm -hmm. that we would, we all, me and you both would mm -hmm. times, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're always going to do that because tomorrow you might do something different. Right. You know, same for me. Tomorrow I might do something different or, you know, it, it, it changes is what I'm saying. Okay. And I, that. I'm not saying none of these are right or wrong. You know, some of the stuff will sound to most as negative or bad, but I don't think none of it's just right or wrong to say. I just think that it's just It's a perspective. Balanced. Yeah, it's a perspective and it's, and it's a balance be, you know, changing, mm -hmm. at, you know, all the time. Like, you know, because, you know, today is different than tomorrow. You know, the weather changes every single day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it's... It's, it's about changes, you know what I mean? Okay. Alteration. Well, because I have this in front of me, I have picked which one that I think is us mm -hmm. most dominantly. I'll even put myself, I'm a very equal opportunity kind of girl. See, wait, wait, I have wait. no problem putting myself <laughs> in my seat because I know who I am. So I'm going to say that we are, and I believe this was number one, I think it was 
is number two. Defensive and angry versus rigid and righteous. Now I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to read another bit, okay? Yeah, reread that. A parental partner can be closed off to a points of view, uh -huh. defensive, or even pushing when, they're re when they receive feedback. Mm -hmm. They may counterattack self-righteously mm -hmm. in relation to suggestions, criticism. Mm -hmm. When a partner is in a childish mode, they may tend to fall apart and become self-hating or sulky when they're given feedback. Mm -hmm. First off, I think we swap roles in this. We have both have moments where we're in the parental and we're in the yeah. child portion yep. of this. Yep. Now it says, in an adult mode, mm -hmm. both people should be curious and willing to explore input from their partner and both welcome yep. constructive criticism that can help them grow individually and in their relationship. Right. Right. So I really think that this was definitely the most dominant. Of, I think, of course, there are all of but this one, I think, was the most dominant right. out of all of them. Yeah, I would say that I can see what you mean by that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's times where our emotions get the best of us. Yes. That's that's what happens. Right. You know what I mean? But for us in particular, there's a lot of things when it comes to um, being transparent. Mm -hmm. A lot of things when it comes to feel about ourselves. Mm -hmm. How we feel about things that we um, are doing things that we accomplish, how we look upon our families and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that plays a big role and that will change how you are, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, based on certain feedbacks you get, based on you could do something and you get a look and you're like, oh, that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, it seemed like they like it, but I don't know, but why are you worried about it? We tend to we tend to fall in that sometimes. I agree with that. Yeah, fully. Um, we would definitely love to hear from you guys out there. Which ones you think you might be? Definitely Absolutely. comment in the comment section below this video. Kind of let us know what you think you know is alive and well in your relationship. Yeah, the relationship that you feel that you're in, and between the two of, of, of your significant other, or even if you're not in a relationship and you're like. You know what? Do, what traits do I tend to yeah. body when I'm in a relationship? Yes, yes, yes. I agree with that because I think this plays in in, 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 in other things too. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily just being in a relationship with someone uh, romantically, mm -hmm. but also yes. with friendship, uh, roommates, mother, daughter, yeah. sisters. Yeah, like any anytime you share Fathers. something mm -hmm. that is you know more than just you know what I mean with another person mm -hmm. if you're sharing uh, something it's it seems like it's it, it goes uh, hand hand. exactly so absolutely right. for sure so the second article i actually have is also from psychology today mm -hmm. it's so funny that everything this week is from psychology today and i started school this week. <laughs> oh wow um but this wait, one wait. was tell, 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 you know that's okay uh -oh. um <laughs> <laughs> look there, there that thing go again <laughs> So this one is entitled Changing Gender Roles in Marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So most married couples have a shared understanding of who does what in their relationship. And it is some unspoken recognition of an in inevitable division of labors and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would you say there is a specific, and this is, Obviously, things have been going on for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. but right now, today, in 2021, do you still think there is a disparity that is considered women's work and men's work when in terms of a marriage, a relationship, or partnership, where who is supposed to do what? I absolutely hate that. I know, but do you think it exists? Exist is one thing. Yeah, it exists. It don't exist. Okay. I think that there's people who feel the, the the opposite. I think there's people who feel real old school and feels like there should be and this is how it should be and the woman should do this and mm -hmm. that and this and that. And and whether or even if you're in a same sex marriage and or whatever, you know, do it's it, it seems like all that whole like role th type situation. Mm -hmm. I just think I I hate that. I feel like it should be something that you with your partner 
come together and say, you know what, I'm strong in these areas, and 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 I'm I'm weak in these areas. Let's mm-hmm. try to see who we can like, balance this out mm-hmm. in any way. I I just hate that whole role thing. Mm-hmm. Like I, I really do. Like for example, the person who wrote this, his name is Dr. Newman, mm-hmm. and this was something he said that I thought was interesting. He said when he grew up. Fathers were employed out of the home. Mothers tended to be in the household. Right. It meant that not all house. Excuse me. I'm having trouble reading. <laughs> that meant not the housekeeping, but taking primary responsibility for the children's upbringing fell on the woman. Mm-hmm. So it's now are different. Most mothers work. Household responsibilities must be shared, but they're not always equally. And what I kind of put in the footnote as I was reading this, because I like to jot notes, I said, mm-hmm. a lot, from my perspective, a lot of men, not you, mm-hmm. still expect this. Like their wives are there with a nine, like you say, how dare you not have a nine to five? Oh, I know, I know. But then where's my dinner at the same time? Oh, no, 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 no. And yeah, did you yeah, wash your cross? Right. So I think that's, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I think that is definitely where the disparity comes because the thing about it is you have to weigh the scales of everything you want all right you, all these, you ain't fold my socks listen, <laughs> t- <laughs> listen t- <laughs> i actually told you the other day remember i said i actually want we have a fairly new washer and dryer and i'm particular about mm-hmm. certain things so i partially just want to wash everything in the house because i don't want nobody to touch my and i don't stuff. want you to because i just feel like it's too much but i prefer for my electronics to be handled with care I get it. I think no, you overload. I think you overload washers and dryers, I, and it drives me insane. I don't. So that is what I would prefer to wash. I don't. You'd be like, it's one towel, one sock. No. That's enough. It's full. It's too full. No. No, it, it don't be too full. Listen, your clothes got to have room to move. I think you're just so used to an older, when we had it, that it's like, you know what I mean? Still handle with care. I mean, yeah, no, I, I agree with that, and that's, that's the thing. It's like... When a partner wants to take on a certain responsibility and the other person just cares so much in their perspective mm-hmm. and they're like, well, I, I just don't want her to work so hard. I don't want her to. Sometimes you allowing that person mm-hmm. to take the responsibility that they're asking for or want to is a fulfillment for them. Mm-hmm. Makes and, them feel good. And, and, it, and, it's, and, it's all, and you should just support that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like, this, like that's what you want to do. I don't want you to have to doing all that. You know what I mean? Because I, I like I wash my own clothes, I, and I'm good with that. I mm-hmm. like that. But at the same time, that's what you want to do. Then it's like, I need to make sure that okay, let me make sure my stuff is ready for her. You know, prepare for her so that way she could do what she wanted easily. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. But that 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 should be something that. You think about it, you know? Yes, like it says here, most women, although not all, do the cooking and cleaning. Mm-hmm. Most men, not all, do the repairs. Men are likely to assemble furniture. Women are likely to find themselves with the task of cleaning it. And so I do know, obviously, in our relationship, things are totally different. Mm-hmm. You do 99% of the cooking unless you feel inspired. I'm not, it's not a, a, a skill issue. It's a situation that I don't enjoy cooking. Mm-hmm. I find it mm-hmm. to be... A task that I really don't want, and so you enjoy. I'm like, go for it. Unless I see some great recipe and I want to try this, I don't, don't care. I probably would just not eat because I just don't. Cooking is like stressful. Right, and and I will say, I will say, one thing I I do not like is when people turn their nose up to that. Mm-hmm. That annoys me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that it's. I'm not saying that your perspective is wrong or something is wrong with you or something's bad. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that this is what we choose. You know what I mean? So don't judge us based on that. Yeah, it's like don't, if you don't like doing you something know? and you end up in a partnership with one who enjoys doing something you don't, it's logical to be like, okay. Right, then. right, right. Like, you know, I don't want to hear, man, you cook all the meal. Like, what? what, 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 what. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. I don't need that. But who's going to wash the dishes? Like, who's going to clean the bathroom? I enjoy <laughs> Who's going to do, you know, like, that. so many other things? Yeah. It's like, so, yeah. it's definitely a shared situation. Exactly, exactly. And it, and it should be a balance and a, that's what I'm saying, the typical thing, 
are not into like you should just find what works for for relationships. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Statistics is one thing, but sometimes go against the grain and, and, and challenge yourself to find what works for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's the woman who does the repairs. Exactly. Buy stuff from IKEA. I love putting stuff together. I t- like I remember being seven months pregnant with Elijah sitting in the middle of the floor putting together his crib mm. cuz I just wanted to do it. Right. I enjoy put I like looking at the little manual right. step 1 right. take A use bolt C and put it to D. Right. I enjoy doing that and by the end I feel good. Yeah, so if a, we bring something task, home it. and I do it yeah. or if you come to our house and you see all the stuff I'm like yeah I put all these together don't look side eye at you like right. you was just being lazy. Right. It's like, no, right. I told him I wanted to do it. In the same right. way that lasagna comes out of the oven was made by him. Because I would literally rather do anything mm-hmm. than be in a kitchen. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that will change. I'm starting to kind of like, you know, learn more about like herbs and things like that. And just the health right. side of things. And so that is getting me more in a situation where I want to try things. Like when we had our juice right. fast. That entire week, I was doing all the juicing. Then you weren't in the kitchen at all. Right, you know, right, right, right. So it's like I enjoyed that week. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, no. What I'm, I'm yeah. It was, you know, sometimes look, sometimes you need, uh, even though you love doing it, sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you need a break just to get your, your mind together, just so you can come back to it like the first love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, it's and like, that's when we can have conversations like this yeah. and be like. Hey, that's why I always talk about right. I want us to start meal planning together or right. meal prepping, as, you know, doing things like that. And we can do it together right. on a Saturday or a Sunday. Cook up a couple of different sides or like staples. Yeah. That during the week it's easy for one of us to just like, hey, I'm just going to brown these oyster mushrooms to go with the sweet potatoes that we cooked uh-huh. or whatever, whatever. I think us doing those types of things together take stress off you. Put me in a position to do more in the kitchen. We're both happy, yes. and it frees up so much more time. And 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 the whole idea that people need to get out the, out their mind that there is always an absolute for everything. Just because I cook, you know, all the meals doesn't mean that there's times where I'm like, you know, man, I'm just a little burnt. Out. You know, mm-hmm. it's okay. You know, and it's and those times where you you like you you have to be able to talk to each other and really fine tune exactly what needs to be done like mm-hmm. right now hey listen listen i already i i i took apart the, the dry this time i need you to take apart the dry and fix it <laughs> <laughs> or some <laughs> or, or anything else in the world yeah yeah but no i because I, we both and i think we all, all honestly have a, a little engineer in us. Mm-hmm. So we all want to be able to put things together and kind of, you know what I mean, yeah. fix up stuff and build a couch. I think the moral <laughs> to all of that is communication and listening. Because at the end of the day, the person is Very going to tell you what they need from you. Mm-hmm. It's the problems come when someone has told you what they need from you. But let's and ask this question. It's like it's not happening. Let's ask this question, though. And you guys can definitely comment. Um, on your thoughts too but the question is why is communication not in there when, when that when things like that happen you know what I mean mm-hmm. and honestly my take on it would be fear the fear you know I agree with you. like the fear and it's like it's not like you're oh, I'm just so afraid it's just that you know sometimes you're like I don't want to burden you know what I mean so I'm afraid that I'll burden you if I say no this time right so it's to even open your mouth and utter hey uh, can uh, and, and you almost yeah. feel like oh now I, I'm asking for too much yeah and I usually and I, and and I, I, know this, I come at it with an attitude like I'll have automatically something in me yeah, like if I said you too fire I'm gonna Cook this meal mm-hmm. that I bought all the stuff for tonight for dinner. Yeah. And then dinner time hits and I'm like, oh no. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> and I, it's like dinner time, and I'm like, no way. Listen, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then I come to it like, you know what? I'm not doing this today, okay? You know I don't like the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it just becomes something else, but it is what it is. Right. So we have reached a moment. We're gonna take a quick break, and we will return in just a moment.
Me Vibrations, the name of the group, Vapors. Check it out on all major platforms. That was, that was it. <laughs> okay, so we have reached that in the podcast where we start talking about the book of the month. The book we are reading this month is You Are the Placebo by Joe Dispenza. We took last week off to celebrate our son's birthday once again. So we also paused our reading requirements. Uh, so we are up to chapter six. The book has been super thought provoking thus far. Um, any specific takeaways that you have from this week's reading? Um, honestly, it's just the whole idea of the placebo and how you literally can create in your mind feelings, thoughts, desires, ideas, and they can either come to life or not come to life. It's all based on you. You can create the juices of life just in your mind alone. You know what I mean? And, and you know, I, I was doing some, some other stuff too, like research on like some of his stuff that he was doing. And there was an experiment that he had, and it's, it's super cool, where they gave people, like, nothing, and they, they were taking something. They were still producing everything that they needed, but just by their mind alone. So I just think that's really cool. Yeah. It was actually had some, some stuff from the chapter. Mm -hmm. This stuff is all actually from chapter four that I want to read because oh, it was yeah, just yeah, kind yeah. of insane. Um, first off, it says, ironically, feeling stressed mm -hmm. was designed to be adaptive. All organisms in nature, including humans, are programmed to deal with short-term stress so that they'll have the resources they need for emergency situations. Mm -hmm. When you sense a threat in your in external environment, the fight-or-flight response is your sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, a subsystem of your if I could speak <laughs> of, your, of your autonomic nervous system mm -hmm. is activated and your heart rate and blood pressure increase right. your muscles tense your hormones like adrenal and cortisol through the through your body to prepare mm -hmm. you to either flee or face fighting a foe in battle right. okay. now it says if you're like most people a string of nerve reacting incidences you in fight or flight response and out of homeostasis which a large part of the time obviously homeostasis is mm -hmm. your normal balanced state right. so we tend to almost never be in that state right um basically maybe c cars cutting you off you know as you're on the road or mm -hmm. having arguments mm -hmm. with your spouse or credit card bills coming in the mail and your computer's crashing all of those kinds of things all keep your stress hormones like continuously flowing and flowing and flowing and i thought that was like super, super interesting right. because we don't actually think we've gotten to a point in our lives where we call normal life when in reality mm -hmm. that's not how we are biologically made to exist right right and then we wonder that's why bodies are breaking down to. yes but the world <laughs> Have us create in our own minds. Yes, it says in fight or flight mode, life sustaining energy is mobilized mm -hmm. so that the body can either run or fight. But when there isn't a return to homeostasis, mm -hmm. vital energy is lost in the system. You have less energy in your internal environment for self growth and repair, long term building projects on, cellular, on a cellular level, and healing when that energy has been channeled elsewhere the cells shut down they no longer communicate with one another and they become selfish air quotes mm -hmm. it's time for routine maintenance it's time for defense it's every cell for itself so the collaborative community of cells working together becomes fractured the immune and endocrine system become weakened as genes in those related cells are compromised when informational signals from outside the cell walls are turned off right Right. So, all of those crazy things that we experience a lot of times, a stress is the number one killer for not lying. Yeah. Like, yeah. it says, surprisingly, long term stress has been linked to anxiety, depression, digestive problems, memory loss, yeah. insomnia, 
hypertension, heart disease, yep. stroke, cancer, ulcers, rheumatoid arthritis, colds, flus, aging, acceleration, allergies, body pain, <laughs> tea, infertility, tense, asthma, hormone issues, skin rashes, hair loss, muscle spasms, and diabetes, just to name a few. Well. <laughs> and it felt like more of a so, than a few. <laughs> so that's everything in existence. Uh, basically. Everything. Yeah. So basically, when you're living in survival mode, with your stress response turned on all the time, mm-hmm. um, we can really focus on only three things. So you're basically telling your body to only focus on three things when you're in that survival mode. Yeah. One yeah. is physical body. Am I okay? Yeah. The environment. Where is it safe? Mm. And time. How long will this threat be hanging over? Yeah. So those the, are the only the three words. things. Yeah. 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 Those are literally the only three things that will even cross your mind when you're in that situation. I say in a, and it's funny because in a lot of cases, writing these books and conducting these stories, they all have PhDs. Whenever they're all labeled as quacks. Like uh, somebody will read yeah. this book and be yeah. like, oh, he's, <laughs> but he's got, he, first of all, he's got a PhD. Mm-hmm. He's got actual studies, right. and people will still be like, and it's so funny to me because you're labeled a quack because you're encouraging people to study things that aren't known. But I thought that was like literally the point of evolution. Right. You will never right. evolve if you continue studying the right. same shit you already know. Right. That literally. like that's you won't, you won't evolve. It's a waste of time. Yeah. And so it's like, for a long time, it felt like human evolution kind of was like super stagnant. Mm-hmm. But it's like now we've entered this time of like people are more embracing, you know, things that are unknown or things that in times they would have, you know, no way in the world that could be true. Yes. So it's a really exciting yes. time to be on the planet because things are really turning over and we're starting to see a lot of those known things. Yeah. Eighties, nineties, like even two thousands in a way, but people like the idea of like, oh, you know, could be this or there could be, you know, aliens or whatever the case is. Is my like, huh? What? Are you You're crazy? crazy? You know, nowadays people are more are more open to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. You know, we are in the age of knowledge. Yes. Or knowledge. Mm-hmm. As I would say. But, um, you know, so this whole, everything that you were just saying, just to basically set it up, it's the balancing, homeostasis is like, is the balancing of the chemicals and brain mm-hmm. that you produce yourself based on things you think are going to happen or don't happen or will happen or might happen yes. or whatever the case is. Yes. That could kill you. It's almost or like. Not eating for example or heal you like sugar right or treats or desserts they, they have their purpose in life they have their purpose yes. to be something that yes. you enjoy yes. however when your diet is only that mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. kind of like certain death shall come upon you right stress has its place in order to like have you ready for anything right for you're not supposed to abide there 24 hours a day seven uh, days absolutely a week. not but you know what just to piggyback off of that, mm-hmm. when I was I was doing like some research, they were saying statistically, a lot of foods and a lot of things like that doesn't really truly affect your weight as much as you think it does. What it is is like you think about like okay, how can this person, how can this person eat like you just said treats, snacks, goodies, all this like fattening stuff in their soup? Why 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 is that? Like where is it going? And they say a lot of times it's because they're not producing as much stress as someone else who would do it. So you think you're like, okay, they're doing all that, but they're in a more higher frequency, mm-hmm. uh, a full state of mind. The more joy you have, the more happiness you have, the more you actually are able to stabilize your body. Mm-hmm. Not saying that goodies and all that other <laughs> crap that you eat is just the best thing for you. No. What I'm saying is, is that you produce their life or death. You yeah. produce life or death. Yeah, and when you see someone who has a weight issue or things like that, people automatically they go, automatically to, go to, you're eating ham hocks all day. This person and it's like too much. every piece of 
this person this, like, may not be eating at all. Well, it could be a little bit of what you're eating or how you're eating or what you're eating, or mm -hmm. food pairings, mm -hmm. and then you take that and you put it with your stress level, yep. and you put that together with how much physical activity, and you put that together with how much water. So it's like there's more components than just the food. And if your and stress we've always, was down, you would... You would, you would probably make better choices the with point. the food. That is I the have point. noticed that, that when that I wake up point. in the morning and I feel good, mm -hmm. I think more about what I eat. I'm like, where are our vitamins? I'm mm -hmm. making the tea. You know, we drink our CCF tea in the morning. Yeah, I mean my tea. Me yeah, you haven't touched yours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like all of those things get done versus when mm -hmm. I wake up and I feel like I'm rolling out of the bed and I like throw on like my jacket with the bleach spot because mm -hmm. I just got to drive Ellie to school and I'm not getting out of the car and I'm just like Ellie wants to listen to music on the way to school and then, like one day we're listening to golden oldie, oldies like listening to the fifth dimension it's when and fire we're in Michael Jackson and we're singing loud together mm -hmm. and then other days I'm <laughs> and she wants to hear music and I'm like whatever yeah. two different people one of them cares about her health, the other yeah. one just wants to get back home so she can lay down. That's another. That, that, that is another. That's like a whole other topic. Probably will for probably another on, day. For, for another day, but how how you feel and your emotions mm -hmm. make you literally someone else. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people don't think about it, you know, it's like yeah. you were angry the other day. You don't remember half the stuff that you were doing because yeah. you are a whole different person. Yeah, and you become self-sabotaging. So then, when somebody tries to acknowledge that, you're like, man, I ain't, I ain't, you know. I didn't say that. People get into jail, the whole thing, and but people don't understand that they are different people based on those types of things. Yeah. And that's like a whole, like I said, that's a whole nother topic. Yes. Topics, but a whole nother topic. Yeah, of and it's yeah. kind of cool how you talk about the book and just mm -hmm. stress, and just take you down this rabbit hole of like all this these enlightening topics, you know? Yeah, because honestly, stress is just, you know, if if I would say we paid attention to this mm -hmm. back in the day, you know, when when well, I even now I'm uh, in, I'm well, reading the now, book, yeah, yeah, and it's like even though I've heard this stuff before, as I'm reading it, I'm like self diagnosed Oh man! Yeah. Oh yeah! Right. Like it's like seriously. Right, and stuff like this, you know, when our parents were kids, you know, and when our parents' parents were kids, if they didn't have the talked, room to think, about if they if we talked about this kind of stuff, who would it, honestly you think about who who would still be here? You know, you would think about the the passed down traumas and traits, and things that the decisions that we made and families and this and that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's all this stuff just hand in hand all because of stress. yeah and it's like yeah you kill stress your life is a bunch so the moral to today's story is take a look at your life take a look at your stressors yeah. take a look at how they're affecting different things in your life let it be you know, illnesses or just like how yeah. you feel on a daily basis yeah. and really take stock of that kind of stuff yeah. and then to take a moment to step back and look at it and be like okay what can I speak what can I change in order to like take my stressors down so that I can be able to flow in a more balanced state yeah literally so next week's reading assignment is for you to, if you are following along is chapters 7 through 9 uh, if you're just getting started or you're a bit behind, take a little extra time this week to get caught up and definitely join us for next week's podcast. It's chapter seven through nine. All righty. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's so well worth the read and just, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's amazing. It's a great book. It's, it's a great So, I know you guys hear that. Oh, the bucket. It's that time again. The, the bucket of. To find out what the topic for next week's podcast <laughs> is going to be. Oh. Alan, are you going to do the drum roll, please? That's a terrible drum roll. Yeah, well. <laughs> Alright, I've picked one. So, next week's topic is well, I'm afraid. Nah, it's not going to be too. Unconditional love. 
does it really exist? Mm -hmm. Is it fair? Mm -hmm. And what is it? Mm. That's good. So that's something to uh, put in your psyche for the next seven days in through return next Wednesday. Right? Yep. Sure is. So, guys. So that does it for this week's podcast. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, ignite, ignite your, your energy. energy.